just off a freeway and hidden amongst the trees, you've got this sort of stepped white wall leading to just quite a plain white door. You realize maybe that door is hiding something quite intriguing. So you've got this thick concrete wall. Then on top of this low little hill, you have these various ventilation shafts. There's something under here, something that was important at one time, but today there's no sign of what that was. Inside, the mystery deepens. As you go through the big steel doors, you're met with a second security zone, like a, a decontamination chamber. Whatever was in here, it certainly meant business. One thing that's really striking here is the whole thing is built with these large steel beams. They look strong enough to support a skyscraper or a stadium, and yet all that's above this is just a grassy mound. The level of structural protection here, though, suggests this wasn't all about what was on the outside, but what was once kept on the inside. It's just this vast, cavernous chamber that echoes with every footfall and clearly meant to house something really important. What was this place built to hide? And from whom? Located near to the Kennedy Space Center, this site dates to a time when the space race wasn't the only battle being fought, and the threat of mass annihilation back on Earth was very real. This bunker was built in 1967, the height of the Cold War. Florida might not seem like a military center, but it was close to Cuba, which is an area that we always worried might have nuclear weapons. And of course, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, that was all about trying to get Russia to remove nuclear weapons from Cuba. What's interesting about this bunker is its orientation, because if you expand to look at the larger area, you'll notice that the main entrance and the exposed part of the bunker is facing away from the Kennedy Center. Now, the reason for this is if there was any attack, the Kennedy Center is the most likely location. So if you face away from it, you're going to be better protected. The orientation of the site, however, was just the start. The level of protection built into the fabric of this place was second to none. Mark Oxley is an expert on the history of the site. So this isn't your normal nuclear fallout bunker. This is actually something a little bit different. It was hardened to such a degree that the outside walls are 18 inches thick, but some of the interior walls go as thick as 48 inches. The foundation was also nine feet thick. But this wasn't built to protect high-ranking officials. The heavy use of metal in the structure gives this away. This was designed for something else. But what you'll notice is right up here. This was actually one of AT&T's and the Department of Defense's communications bunkers. The goal of this bunker was to keep the hardened communications of both the AT&T long distance long lines as well as the military's Autovon network secure in case of nuclear war. In the aftermath of a nuclear attack, it was predicted that citizens would swamp the telephone exchange as they tried to reach loved ones. But the military would need guaranteed open lines to coordinate their response. This was where the Autovon network and its priority status would come in. The Autovon network ran parallel to the normal communications network. This was a way for the Defense Department and the executive branch to maintain communication between key defense agencies and key military assets during a crisis. This bunker was one small piece of a much larger puzzle. So there are these bunkers scattered around the United States from coast to coast, and they're all like 75, 100 miles apart in this intricate web around the country. AT&T actually built three different kinds of bunkers. One type was full of communications equipment. Another type had power generating equipment. And the third type had microwave equipment. A microwave link can send telephone data across the open air without having to be connected by wires. So you can imagine how that could be very valuable in the aftermath of a war. A nuclear explosion would create an incredibly destructive force sweeping over the land. However, the explosive blast wasn't the real danger for a place like this. That would have been the ensuing electromagnetic pulse that would have wiped out electrical equipment for miles around. 
Near the Kennedy Space Center in Florida is a nuclear bunker that once held vital equipment for keeping military lines of communication open in the event of an attack. But to do this, it had to be able to endure the effects of an electromagnetic pulse. Being inside the structure is kind of like being inside of a steel cage. And that's important because one of the risks of a nuclear war is that when a nuclear weapon goes off in the atmosphere, it sends out this bolt of electricity that could destroy electronics for hundreds of miles away. So if you want to protect your sensitive electrical equipment, you want to put it inside a cage of metal, a Faraday cage. And that's exactly what they did here. In a Faraday cage, it can be something as simple as chicken wire. It's just a metal mesh. And what it does is it basically neutralizes electrical charges. So inside of the bunker, you'll have your people or any equipment, and all of that is protected from anything else that will be going on outside. While shielding the equipment was the purpose of this site, it would all be for nothing if there was no one left to operate it. So these bunkers were designed to be habitable even in the event of a nuclear attack. There were large cans of powdered butter, powdered eggs, spaghetti, meat sauce, I mean, all kinds of things. And those were meant to sustain five people, five workers within this facility for 30 days, 24-7. If an attack happened, they would go into lockdown until they were notified it was safe to go outside. So this is one of the radiation detectors. Basically, these are planted all around the facility, both on top of the facility and below the facility. They were meant to detect gamma radiation. So in case of a nuclear strike or nuclear event in the area, this would basically send a signal to the remote monitoring station and automatically close all the blast doors in the facility and turn the carbon air filtration systems on to ensure that the air quality was preserved inside the facility. Once the blast doors were down, access in and out of the facility was strictly controlled. So if you had entered after a radioactive event, there would be these massive lead-aligned doors blocking your entrance into the facility. So what you'd have to do is you would be in your decontamination suit, and you'd be entering what is known as the decontamination shower. This is where you would rinse off all of the radioactive particles that were on you so that you wouldn't be traipsing them into the main clean environment. That was critical to ensure that everybody who was inside stayed alive. Imagine the job that these people were asked to do. You go and you live in this bunker. You're waiting for a nuclear war you desperately hoped would never happen. If it did happen, you'd have to wonder, was your family and everyone you know wiped out? Meanwhile, you've got this difficult task to perform, and they were expected to stay on that station and run these communications for up to a month after any potential conflict. Fortunately for the men inside, they never faced such a situation. And in 1979, with a new and improved system being rolled out across the country, the military abandoned these bunkers for good. Today, a new use has been found for this bomb-proof bunker. Mark is calling it back into action. Well, everything today is internet-based. The Internet of Things is everywhere. Everybody relies on their cell phones heavily, GPS navigation. It has to be processed where there's a lot of power and a lot of processors. And that would happen in a data center like this one. Now cleared out, this bunker is being prepped for that next stage of its life as a place to securely store row upon row of servers. And with hacking, climate change, or even nuclear conflict, all potential challenges in the future, Old or new, it's not the only one of its kind being made ready. This Cold War relic is now being imitated all around the world among America's peer adversaries in order to secure their data from anything that might bring down a vitally important network and compromise the security of the state. 